I just got back from the um, Asian leg of the World Cup, uh, World Cup season, uh, Hachioji and then Seoul. I was uh, 25th place in Hachioji and 8th place in Seoul. So I've been trying to keep a bit of a running commentary over the comps and what I've been doing. It's been quite hard, it's been something I'm, I'm getting used to and slowly getting better at. But yeah, it's been a good experience. Uh, so I've got a lot of, lot of footage from the, uh, the first two World Cups of the season. Um, everything from training, the competition, the local cultures of Japan, Korea. It's been, yeah, it's been a great experience and there's a lot of footage to come. So that's what this video is gonna be about. Right now, I've just got back from the, um, the, the first two World Cups and training is going uh, full steam ahead for the Salt Lake City World Cup. Uh, so it's been a few weeks now since we left for, the, for Japan. It was a very long flight, I think 14, 14 hours. So yeah, it's pretty intense. It takes a lot to get over that sort of sort of flight duration. Uh, so I think door to door um, from from London to Hachioji was, was like 20 hours. So yeah, pretty intense. It takes it completely drains you to be honest. For the long travels this season, I've decided to try a few new things. Uh, for example, I got like a compression top to help reduce kind of the swelling and the overall the overall uh, toll the travel takes on you. So when you get into the into Japan, you're feeling good and ready, and you're not feeling too sluggish. Whether that's stretching between flights, getting up, getting up a lot during the flight, and just making yourself generally feel good, eating well, drinking a lot. Yes, it was good, and I felt um, I felt a lot better when I got to Japan. So it was worth it. Uh, Japan was an absolutely amazing experience for both culture and the training. The training there is just absolutely incredible. I spent a lot of time in B Pump Okikubo and the, the level of the boulders there is just insane. I, I can't actually quite believe it. You've got like V15 boulders there with World Cup climbers just, just hammering them. It's just, it's so good. The scenes there are just incredible. Bouldering in Japan is just completely different to the UK. The boulders there are just so much harder than anything we get over here. And it shows itself in, in all, all of their climbers. They, just the, the minimum level in Japan is just so much higher than over here in the UK and it's and it shows by the gyms. Japan's climbing gyms, especially Okihubo, has the infamous kind of tape grading scale with um, black tape being the hardest, which is, it's just insane. I didn't even get on a black tape because they're just so hard. And then it goes green, green, brown, and then I think orange, mint, and even the fourth, fifth hardest climbs in the gyms are just so hard, are just so hard. I reckon the fourth hardest set in that gym is probably the hardest set you'd get over in the UK. So yeah, it's really eye-opening. Yeah, so you put hard boulders on the wall, you're gonna get strong climbers. It's basically the Japanese philosophy. Well, the schedule for me is basically I arrive, I arrive at the competition destination and then I take in the next, the day, the day after traveling, I take an easy, a very, very easy climbing day, almost to loosen up, like get rid of your, all the travel kind of stiffness. And then the next day after that is normally a rest day. And then after that is when I start to feel good again after the long travel and, uh, and, and start doing some hard climbs. So my first session off the, la off the landing in Japan was a very easy slab and coordination session. I didn't do any physical boulders. I took it very easy and it was a very short and easy session. Did some stretching and yeah, just an easy day really. Uh, so B Pump, Okikubo, when uh, we were there, all of the World Cup climbers there, it was by far the strongest gym in the world by, by a country mile. It was, it was insane. You just walk around and you just see just World Cup climbers everywhere. It was, it, was, it was great to see. First World Cup of the season, everyone's there. You get to see all your friends again. Everyone's, everyone's training really hard. It's, um, it's just a great scene, really. You walk in there and it's just, it's, you don't want to leave, really, but you have to because you've got to be nice and rested for the competition. Did actually get a bit carried away. Um, I did my warm up, did the slabs, and thought, okay, I've had enough of this. I'm getting on the, I'm getting on the hard stuff. So I ended, up, um, I ended up getting on a brown tape, and that was actually, my first brown tape flash, which I think is the third hardest of the circuit. And it was a nice benchmark because previously, um, September, the year before, I was in Morioka for the Combined World Cup. And um, I managed to have a session, a couple, a couple sessions at B-Pump. And yeah, I was nowhere near a brown tape. So it was nice to see some progress over the, over the hard winter training. Yeah, I really enjoyed B-Pump. It was a great scene, a great, a great few days training there with good people. 
and I'm psyched to go back whether, whenever that may be. Outside of the climbing part of the, uh, the Japanese uh, trip, we got to do a lot of great things in Japan, visit all of the temples and stuff. Managed to find a pretty good burger place actually in Shinjuku, which called Shogun Burger. It wasn't exactly the traditional Japanese cuisine, but it was a good burger, so I recommend it if you're, <laughs> if you're in Tokyo. So in B Pump, there was a, a competition simulation set on the comp hall. It was meant to be World Cup semi-final, World Cup semi-final boulders, but I think it ended up being a bit harder. So the first boulder had a, had a really techy slab. Second boulder was a, like a really short, powerful crimp boulder, which was just a great boulder, really. The third boulder was a <laughs> was a um, like a like a jump paddle into a which was a which was a cool boulder. And the fourth one was oh, a really hard compression kind of in a groove type thing, shouldery. Wasn't the nicest boulder, but yeah, sometimes you get those in World Cups. The boulders themselves were uh, probably slightly harder than a World Cup semi-final semi -final level, but the setting was, was just incredible. All of the boulders were just almost impossible until you had the exact correct beta, and that just completely unlocked the climb and made them feel doable. That's such a, yeah, such a good job by the setters and such a hard thing to do. So it was a, it was great to climb on them. So the dino was a, the dino was a very good boulder for, for me, especially because yeah, it taught me a lot. To start with, I was trying the dino, but I was really, really tensing. And yeah, I was hitting the first hold and then just spinning off. But as soon as I thought, okay, just, just go for this move and relax, it just completely unlocked it. And it almost felt quite easy once, once I'd uh, found the right kind of Body position. In Seoul qualification boulder four, there was a, a very, there was a coordination boulder which required a very specific movement. And it just so happened that a couple of weeks before in B pump, there was almost that exact same movement movement pattern, which I did a bit of training on before. So I don't know if that's the reason why I did the boulder because it was not many people topped the the boulder in the comp. It's important to try a lot of different styles because you never know what what. Um, could come up in the comp. So on the Tuesday, um, we headed over to Hachioji and then that would be two days killing time in Hachioji before the, the World Cup start because I like to, I always like to take two rest days uh, before the comp. Some people prefer one, but I've always preferred two to like properly recover my body. Yeah, we came up with this um, this bet, I guess, where if you, if you get an Audi in a comp, that means you have to get the Audi logo tattooed onto yourself and I'll explain what an Audi is. So if, um, in the qualification round, if you get zero zones and zero tops, then it looks like on the scoreboard it's zero, 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 which kind of looks like the Audi logo. And yeah, if you get an Audi, then you gotta, you gotta get it tattooed onto you. No one's got an Audi yet, but yeah, I'm hoping it's not gonna be me. Yeah, so even if you're having a really bad round, I mean, you'll be getting to Boulder 3 and then realizing you've got no zones yet and just being like, oh my God, I don't care where I come in this comp, I just don't want an Audi anymore. So it's a, it's a good little game. Good incentive to, to not do bad. Uh, no one's got an Audi so far. Hachioji and Seoul. Uh, it was some properly hard rounds, so a few people got close, but no, no one's got an Audi yet. Hachioji was my first ever <laughs> Boulder World Cup. So that means um, basically I'm way down the order because you come out for your qualification in your world ranking and because I'd never done a Boulder World Cup before. I was way down in the ranking, so I'd had a long time in isolation. So yeah, so killing time in isolation is, it's always painful, but it's something you've got to do, especially to start. So going into isolation, normally what I, normally what I bring with me, I have my food, my foam roller, a fan, like a pack of cards or something to kill time. And a fan has actually become uh, one of my more recent, addition, more recent additions. Um, with these comps, they can get very hot and sweaty, so having a fan is, is is very important now. Unfortunately, you can't bring iPads or anything into um, isolation. It would be nice to sit there and watch a, watch a film or something, or a series, but no, nothing that can connect to the internet, obviously, to stop um, any chance of cheating. So for me personally, my warm-up takes an hour to an hour, hour and a half, I think an hour and a half. So I'd start that with a bit of cardio, some star jumps, some mountain climbers, and then I'll move on to a Theragun. Uh, that just kind of helps activate my muscles. Then do a bit of foam roller, a small bit of stretching if I feel a bit stiff, but 
mainly it's just straight onto the wall and get climbing. So in isolation, everyone goes in in their teams. Um, everyone's normally kind of sat with their teams until you get onto the actual warm-up wall where people kind of just uh, kind of start making climbs together, warming up, and it's always a nice scene. But uh, I'm in there with the, the GB guys, the GB coaches, Liam and Rachel, and it's always great to have a laugh with them. I get on really well with both of them. So yeah, normally isolation, the, the time passes quite quickly. So for the coaches, you have two coaches. One, uh, one coach is um, what's called front of house, and front of, front of house is basically dealing with all the appeals, everything from counter appeals, appeals, just, yeah, just watching the competition basically and making sure everything's going smoothly. And then you have another coach who's with you in isolation the whole time, and they're helping with everything from warm-ups, just to keeping you company, really. Yeah, so you've got someone uh, focusing on what you're doing in the isolation and then someone focusing um, on you outside the isolation. So really all you have to do is just focus on your climbing, which is really nice. You're not having to worry about anything else. It's so important just to have, just to be 100% on the climbing and then everything else is taken care of for you. Yeah, so I was in isolation for I think three and a half hours in Hachioji and then I came out to my first ever World Cup boulder and from what I can remember it was like a, it was a small little double clutch and then into a nice techie finish with a nice arete. Um, it was a nice boulder, had a lot of tops, it was, yeah, a nice way to start the round. Yeah, so the first boulder I did, I managed to flash it. Um, my first flash and my first Boulder World Cup. Yeah, it's always, it's a nice feeling. Boulder two was a, was a slow kind of left moving slab, which I managed to get on my, I think third attempt. Uh, normally slabs have been something which I found a bit harder than, than, the, than the, the really burly stuff. So yeah, I was psyched to get that. Um, it was one of the boulders which you almost had to get to have a chance of getting into the semi-final. So yeah, good to get that on my third go. And then I moved on to, uh, five minutes later, I moved on to Boulder three, which was, I think it may have been a bit easy, but it's hard for the setters to judge the level on the first ever on the first comp of the season because everyone's been training really hard. Everyone's got themselves into insane shape, and then yeah, it was a powerful boulder and maybe a bit undercooked um, for the level of the people there. So, so boulder four, the, the really powerful pink pinch problem, an absolutely stunning problem. I only had three tops, I think, from Yoshiki Ogata. Uh, he's just insanely strong. Yannick Flo, also insanely strong and Tomo, Tomoaki Takata, Japanese guy, obviously, also insanely strong. Um, by the time I got onto it, we, the boulder had had a lot of mileage on it. There was rubber all over the feet. It was a bit sweaty, but... So I managed to get the zone, which was, which was really good because not many, not many people had the zone. There's no excuses. If I was stronger, I would have got it, but, um, but yeah, it was, quite, it was quite used by the time I got to it. So by boulder five, I had three tops and four zones and going into this boulder I had to top it to get into the semi-final and this was the this was the heartbreak boulder for me it was um it was like a, a yellow yellow coordination boulder with two coordination moves in it not necessarily my best style but something I put a lot of work into um, during the winter so I managed to get the zone and got incredibly close to getting the top and getting into my first semi-final, but I just didn't quite make it. Yeah, it was so close and I still look back at it going, oh, if only, but it was a great learning experience and yeah, a lot of lot of things learned going into Seoul. So coming out of that round, I was obviously, I was frustrated not to make the semi-final. I think there's two different reactions. You've got your reaction, your reaction straight after your comp when you're really emotional and you're in, in the moment. And then you have your, um, reaction like a day later once you've had time to process and look at the footage back and see that yeah see what really happened as soon as I finished my round I was I was properly gutted because I really thought I had it and I thought I could make my first semi-final but then a day later I looked back at all the footage and realized it's my first ever what first ever Boulder World Cup and yeah it was it was a good effort and I'd put a lot of yeah I'd, I'd learned a lot of stuff for next week after my semi-final round I was a bit gutted and it took some time to process that, but the next day, instead of resting for semi-finals, I was already off back to B-Pump, uh, the, the strong gym with the hard boulders. Um, and yeah, I had a great, I had a really cool session there to kind of wind down from the comp. And I managed to get my first green tape, which is one harder than brown and one less than black, which is, yeah, previously they were completely unattainable for me. And it was a big first move, really powerful middle, and then a properly sketchy, massive 
throw over the top, which, yeah, was, was would never get set in UK gyms because it's just so scary. But uh, luckily, I had Liam, Liam, uh, one of the GB coaches there to to spot me. But I don't know if he would actually do anything if I fell. But yeah, it's quite a cool picture of him sat there like that, <laughs> looking a bit terrified. But yeah, it was it was cool. Liam was confident he had me, but I had my doubts. And then everyone um, went back to semi-finals uh, the next day to cheer on Jim Pope, who made it in. Uh, yeah, it's always always good to support your teammates when they've had a bigger comp. So that was Hachiochi finished. I managed to f I finished 25th in my first Boulder World Cup. Um, looking back on it, it was a good result. Uh, I got some good points going to the OQS, the Olympic qualifying series. And yeah, then it's full steam ahead on for Seoul. The Seoul World Cup came around uh, nice and quick, only a week after Hachioji, and unfortunately it was hit by a lot of rain, a lot of rain. The mats were soaked, isolation was dripping wet. It's an outdoor venue and kind of like a waterfall park. So as you can imagine, the spectators were getting soaked, the mats were getting soaked, the climbs were getting sprayed on by the water. So it turned out that the qualifications were postponed to the next day. Uh, so I came back the next day, uh, qualifications postponed by uh, till the morning after. You've got to deal with what you're dealt. Uh, it's the same for everyone, you've just got to get on with it. And yeah, that's what everyone did. Coming on to the qualification, the first boulder was a slab. It was an absolutely brutal slab. It was, it was insane. No one got it in the entire round. It, you started on like a mantle press, got your foot up, stood up, and then you got given this insanely bad foot that you kind of had to to press up and launch for the finish which you couldn't even see because it was blind yeah the foot was just so bad I actually hung around on this little button just trying to get anything out of this foot to try and launch to the top and it was just it just wasn't happening yeah it would take um, a bit of a genius to, to climb that I think uh, so I managed to get the zone on my sixth attempt which turned out to be yeah very good effort because it was insanely hard I didn't know that no one had got it at the time but Whilst I was on it, I just was like, I have no idea how to do this. So unless someone had found something else, I thought it can't have had many tops. So boulder two, it was um, a bit of a bit of a compression boulder, starting on some toe hooks, coming out into a into a sloper, and then kind of like a double clutch in the middle, and then another double to the top. I think I managed to not break it, just do it a bit differently. I got a high left foot and a right heel, which kind of uh, made it a bit more static, and. Yeah, it was an important boulder to the top and I managed to get it on my third go, so happy with that. So moving on to boulder three, I think it was um, another bit of an undercooked boulder. I might have referred to it as jugline in the, in the moment because it felt, felt pretty easy. It had a, a lot and a lot of tops, so maybe a bit undercooked by the setters again, but yeah, you had, you had to climb it. Basically everyone flashed it and it's not bad to have easy boulders on the round. It just kind of makes it almost a four boulder round, so yeah, happy to get that. So boulder four was the coordination boulder, and to be honest, I had a bit of an episode on this. It was a, yeah, I, I did, I managed to get the boulder, but it's a lot harder than it looks. Um, you had to jump off this awful white volume, which just had so much rubber on it, and it was so kind of shallow that you couldn't get any purchase off it. I managed to stick it after 15 attempts, but it absolutely shredded my skin. I was bleeding through three or four tips at the time, and it wasn't over once you stuck the first, first move. A lot of people fell off the top, so I was quite happy to, to do the top first time. But it was this is the boulder that was similar to the to the movement in B pump. Yeah, it was. I was really psyched to get it, um, but it shredded my skin and almost made the rest of the comp a bit of a bit of a nightmare. I got boulder four with 15 seconds left, and I was psyched at the top of that. I was really happy. Um, I knew at the top of it that it was quite a hard boulder, and I was I didn't know I was going to be in semis by that point, but I had quite a good idea that I was. Um, I had quite a lot of the almost kind of wind conditions. I got the first zone, which I knew was hard, and I had got this boulder, so I knew it wasn't a done deal, but yeah, I had a good chance going into the fifth boulder. And boulder five was completely my style. A really good boulder, but unfortunately my skin was so bad that I was basically trying to manage my way through it. I managed to get the zone on my first go, uh, but I couldn't get the top, and I was just shredding my tips even more. But Getting the zone on that meant I went through to semis in, in ninth place, so really happy with that. Yeah, at the end of the round, I got three tops, five zones. That was enough for ninth place. Um, 
fourth in my group, I think. I was really, really happy to be in my first semi-final, but just looking at my tips and just seeing the, the monstrosity that I was going to have to deal with later in semi-final or semi-final slash final, um, yeah, I was happy, but also kind of annoyed at myself for not managing my skin, but my, managing my skin better. Uh, so after qualies finished, it was straight back to the hotel. I was in semi-final with uh, Max Milne, um, really strong GB guy, psyched to be in semis with him. And yeah, the theme of the theme of the next few hours were coffee, food, and super glue, and anything I can stick on my tips to make them <laughs> just not not bleed everywhere. Starting my round in the semi-final, it was another uh, really tricky slab. This one got a couple of tops, but not many at all. It was a very tricky stand up onto a bad volume, and then you get your right foot out onto a small kind of slopey jib, and then it's a, a stand up into a palm press. I didn't manage to get the zone on this, but I was progressing through the boulder, which I was happy with, uh, but yeah, no zone for me. And then going onto the second boulder, it was a really, really, really hard press with your left hand, hard on the wrist, hard on the shoulder, into a boomerang here, and a really, really hard release, which I didn't manage to get a zone on either. The, yeah, the semi-final climbs were just absolutely brutal. So for boulder three, it was a, a yellow coordination, like properly showy for the crowd boulder, and I was, and I managed to get it on my third go. I was so psyched. The lights went out. The, it, it got dark, the South Korean crowd, uh, crowd came alive and I found myself on top of the boulder and I was, I was so psyched because it's something I put a lot of work into over the winter and not something that was necessarily my style previously. And it only had, I think, 10 tops in the round. So I was really psyched to be one of the, one of the people to top it and a def definite highlight of the comp. The last move was absolutely terrifying. You Going from this split position with a really, uh, weird kind of uh, Gaston and then jumping to a to a huge pinch way out right and if you didn't catch it perfectly but it's the sort of thing if you catch it perfectly it feels really good and you're never coming off but if you make one slight mistake it sends you spinning off and there's some people who are taking like terrible terrible falls off that like helicoptering yeah injury boulder so for boulder four it was insane it was literally like hitting your head against a brick wall it was I had no idea what to do I managed to figure out there was a paddle towards the end, but the holds were just so bad, and I, no one got anywhere on it. Mejdi shout got quite close at the end, um, but yeah, insane boulder. No one, no one got in it anywhere near. Finishing the round with that one top, brutal set of semi-final boulders. It put me in eighth place, which I was really psyched with. Um, second World Cup, and I managed to get uh, eighth. It was definitely a good result for me and something to build on. So Hachioji in Seoul was a, a big success for me, I think. Looking back on it, I went from 25th, 25th place in Hachioji to 8th place in Seoul. I got a lot of points for the OQS. I got a lot of experience and now I'm, I'm just so psyched for Salt Lake. I'm going to manage my skin a lot better for Salt Lake. I know what I need to do. I'm going to be coming out a lot earlier in the order and yeah, I just can't wait to get there. And I just, yeah, I really can't wait to go. So I'm back in um, I'm back in the UK now. I've um, already got over the jet lag. I'm feeling good, and th the theme for now is lead training. I need to get some good stamina sessions in. I've had already had some, a couple good, really hard sessions uh, because lead's only six weeks away, and it's this time of the season where everyone's still really focused on bouldering because it's fairly early in the season. But lead is slowly, slowly approaching. Um, and I've had some, yeah, had some good stamina sessions. Also been trying to keep my power top top for Salt Lake. So lead training. Um, now it's actually not the hardest thing to get my lead endurance back because may, most of the work for uh, all my endurance has come from a huge base of, win, of, of the winter and, and years and years of almost kind of building on my, on my lead endurance. So now I can almost go into sort of like a, a one or two week extreme kind of endurance based training and I will get it back very very quickly which is which is nice it's not something which you can build on really quickly but once you've got it it's easy it's easy to get back yeah so for lead I think one of the most important things is building like a really really high base and then you can basically just call on that whenever you want do a bit of training and then it'll come back really quickly which is always nice so I've got a video planned at hang um, that's 
that's the workshop with Jake Mason, just trying a load of slabs, setting some slabs. Just a really, really nice day of trying hard climbs. And then off to Salt Lake, I'm gonna be trying to keep a bit more of a running commentary for the World Cup and just so I can get the video out nice and quickly and it can be sort of kind of like a timely thing. The focus is always gonna be on the climbing, but I'm really psyched to get some footage and yeah, and just show the World Cup scene really. <laughs>